Did you know that auditors identify less than 3% of frauds? There is a popular misconception that financial statement audits are conducted with the primary objective to deter and detect fraud. Since the collapse of Enron, independent external financial statement auditors have made great strides in improving on communicating the true objective of an audit and who holds the responsibility for detecting fraud. This video will address these points specifically so there is no confusion. But auditors must continue to battle the misconception and need to continue to reinforce that a financial statement audit is not a forensic accounting fraud investigation. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the differences between auditors and forensic accountants, explain the similarities between the two, explain why CPAs who dabble in forensics are at risk, compare the roles of the auditor and the forensic accountant, compare the auditor and forensic accountant's objectives, responsibilities, professional standards, and engagement terms. What you learn in this video, you will be able to use straight away. So let's go. Auditing is a process of determining whether a company's reported financial position and performance are fairly represented and in accordance with certain accounting standards. A forensic investigation is an examination of specific records and information to help determine facts related to a suspicion or allegation of fraud. Audits and forensic investigations are different services that are planned and performed to accomplish unique objectives. While both have a responsibility to detect fraud, the degree of that responsibility is substantially different. Auditors help provide confidence in the world's financial system by performing audits of financial statements to provide assurance that company management is presenting a true and fair view of a company's financial position and performance. Forensic accountants assist entities in conducting an investigation by providing their expertise from the initial allegation or suspicion of fraud to resolution. Whether the end result is restitution, litigation, an insurance claim, refer referral to a law enforcement agency, or proof that no fraud occurred. Let's talk a bit about the objectives and the responsibilities. The overall objective of an audit is to obtain reasonable assurance about whether financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. This enables the auditor to express an opinion on whether the financial statements are presented fairly in all material respects in accordance with an applicable financial reporting framework and to report on the financial statements and communicate as required by generally accepted auditing, auditing standards, GAS, in accordance with the auditor's findings. A forensic investigation is performed to assist an entity in gathering sufficient relevant data to assist a trier of fact in its determination of whether or not fraud was committed. The forensic investigation's objective include gathering evidence to identify the type of fraud, quantifying the amount of loss, determining who was involved, when it began, why it was able to be perpetrated, and how it was concealed, and reporting the findings verbally or in a written report along with supporting evidence. Forensics, the word itself, means something used in or suitable for use in courts of law or public debate. Therefore, a forensic investigation requires a very high standard of support that can sustain the scrutiny of a court of law. Fraud is defined as the knowing misrepresentation of the truth or the concealment 
of a material fact to induce another to act to his or her detriment. Forensic accountants should avoid opinions on whether fraud exists, as they cannot opine on someone's intent and are not the trier of fact. The forensic accountant's role in litigation is to report on legally obtained evidence objectively, succinctly, and with sufficiently explained foundation. For matters in litigation, there must be evidence provided to the trier of fact beyond a reasonable doubt in criminal cases, and a preponderance of the evidence in civil cases. An auditor owes primary allegiance to the investing public, and the objective is general in nature. A forensic accountant is not concerned with reaching a general opinion on the financial statements as a whole. His or her objective is more in is more specific in nature as defined by the scope of services in the engagement letter, and the work is typically directed through counsel and therefore privileged and confidential. In addition, the forensic accountant may be asked by the company to advise on internal controls that can be implemented to prevent a discovered fraud from happening again. Like most CPAs, I started my career as an auditor. Auditing has a program and a plan from the start that usually doesn't take any turns. Forensic accounting starts with a plan that at any point in the investigation may require a pivot and new direction based on findings. If you or your client suspect fraud, you need to retain a forensic accounting expert. We have the experience investigating, reporting, and testifying as forensic accounting and investigation experts. To find out more about me and the services we offer, please visit uncoverfraud.com. Auditors and forensic accountants adhere to different sets of professional standards in performing their work. The auditor attests to the assertions of the other parties. In an attest service, the practitioner expresses a conclusion about the reliability of a written assertion that is the responsibility of another party such as company management. In the forensic investigation, the practitioner develops findings, conclusions, and recommendations based on the evidence discovered during the forensic investigation. Auditors and forensic accountants must develop a clear understanding with their clients about the nature and extent of the professional services to be performed, including the scope and limitations. An auditor must adhere to applicable auditing standards and include prescribed engagement terms. For example, an auditor should include a statement that because of the inherent limitations of an audit, together with the inherent limitations of internal controls, an unavoidable risk exists that some material misstatements may not be detected, even though the audit is properly planned and performed in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. A forensic accountant is typically hired by counsel on behalf of a client to maintain the privilege of communications and adheres to less restrictive engagement term standards as those by an auditor. The forensic accountant's engagement terms should be customized to define the client, to limit assistance to certain issues, to establish the boundaries of the investigation and applicable standards, and to describe the roles and responsibilities of the parties. A forensic investigation cannot describe expected results or make any guarantees regarding the findings or outcomes of a forensic investigation. The trier of fact, the judge in some instances, determines guilt, innocence, or liability. So a forensic accountant should avoid opinions regarding guilt, innocence, or liability of any party involved of the forensic investigation. Let's discuss other notable differences. Timing. Audits are planned periodically and on a recurring basis. Forensic investigations are unforeseen, reactive, and usually non-recurring. Predication. A forensic investigation begins with an allegation or suspicion of fraud. The allegation or suspicion of fraud is not the basis of an audit. Obligation. Forensic investigations are typically conducted voluntarily because a company has a suspicion 
or at an allegation of fraud. An audit is an obligated engagement for which a company must hire an auditor to provide an opinion on the truthfulness and fairness of its financial statements. Performance. An audit is performed by auditors who are CPAs. A forensic investigation is typically performed by a multidiscipline team of experts that often includes CPAs. Appointment. The appointment of an auditor is made by the shareholders of a company. A forensic accountant is appointed by the owners, management, council, or a third party. Audits and forensic investigations are different services, each with their own unique objectives, standards, and responsibilities. Accountants dabbling in forensic accounting and fraud investigation are taking on significant risk for themselves, their firm and client's exposure and liability overall. While we all know accountants out there, there are far and fewer forensic accountants in practice. Whether you are a CPA, litigator, or business leader, you may want to consider getting to know a forensic accountant today. In the event that you're dealing with putting out a fire, you may want to know in advance who you're going to call. My name is David Malamud, and I am a forensic accounting and fraud investigation expert. To find out more about me and the services we offer, please visit uncoverfraud.com. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and as well send some likes and some reshares. Thank you again. God bless.